This is part one of a video tutorial for Thompson's Prequel. Uh, Thompson's Prequel is a case in which the, an entrepreneur, Fred Thompson, needs to build a uh, financial forecast for his business uh, in order to use the forecast to discuss his cash need and his valuation with an investor. Uh, this tutorial takes you as quickly as we can through the process, in, as quickly and as detailed as we can through the process of creating that projection. There are uh, three basic tabs here. There's a two-year monthly budget down here at the bottom. There's an annual model, which combines the monthly numbers into annual numbers and includes the um, balance sheet and cash flow and financial calculations. And then there's also a chart here, which is blank for the moment, and we'll come back to it in a moment. Okay, uh, if you have not already found this, you should be able to download this um, spreadsheet off of Blackboard. Uh, the spreadsheet is called Thompson's Prequel Financial Model. As you can see on each page, there are already assumptions input for you, as well as some formatting to save us all a lot of time. Uh, a few good practice, a few comments about good practices in financial statement forecasting. Uh, first of all, this assumption section and the one on the next page are similarly treated in the sense that uh, there are, uh, first of all, the assumptions are there. Uh, second, uh, they're identified in a separate section. The assumption section here is, uh, is fairly short. And then there's a separate calculation section uh, below it. And uh, the numbers in the assumption section are identified in a separate color, uh, just so that you know uh, for future reference, if you ever need to change a number, uh, the number you want to change is a red one and not a black one. Uh, we'll do our calculations in black so that, um, uh, so, so that it's very clear uh, what it is that you're changing if you ever want to do a sensitivity analysis. There are a few uh, keyboard shortcuts that I want to demonstrate as we go along, but let's just dive into this model, and uh, I will demonstrate them uh, as we move along. Uh, to copy uh, the new units sold, uh, units sold per month is actually given as an assumption, so I'm going to use an a, a equal sign, uh, scroll up to the uh, or cursor up to cell C, uh, C5, and you can see C5 appears in C17, hit return, and it picks up that number. Um, the, uh, on the, with respect to the revenue number, we know generally that revenues is equal to units sold times price per unit. In this case, I'm going to make uh, C6, the price per unit, an absolute cell reference so that it'll be easier to copy it over for future months as we construct our forecast. So to make it an absolute cell reference, I could do one of two things. I could type dollar seed, I, I could say type dollar signs in front of the C and 6 in the cell reference, or I could use uh, a keyboard shortcut, uh, which on my Mac is a command and T, as in Thompson's prequel. That makes C6 an absolute cell reference, and when you hit return, uh, you can see revenues is, uh, is forecasted in the first month at one unit times $150,000 or $150,000. Variable cost of sales, again, this is a very simple model. Uh, so variable cost of sales, is, it runs off of revenues. So it's revenues, and this, that's not an absolute cell reference, times the variable cost of sales percent to sale, which is in, C, in cell C7. Again, I want an absolute reference, and I'm all set there. Fixed cost of sales is a period cost. Um, this is the cost per month uh, to conduct the pro um, uh the sourcing of the product, or the manufacture of the product. I do want that as an absolute cell reference, and then I'm uh, done with my cost of sales section, except for adding up the fixed and variable pieces. Hmm. I evidently made a typing error, and I'm going to correct that. Okay, gross margin, as we all know, is simply revenues minus uh, cost of sales. Now, um, we could continue this way, but I think I'd like to adopt the, uh, the uh, convention going forward that all expense numbers are going to be expressed as negative quantities. So instead of a minus sign, I'm going to, uh, instead of an equal sign, I'm going to express the variable cost of sales. I'm going to substitute um, 
the equal uh, substitute for the equal sign a minus sign or a dash so that the two expense items that I've already worked on, variable cost of sales and fixed cost of sales, are both negative numbers. Now that way um, it's clear to me as I look at it in the future that that is a, um, an expense item and I need to change this from a negative to a plus. So the gross margin is positive but not by very much and um, I know that my gross margin is that he's earning a slight profit at the gross margin. Uh, variable SGNA is done very much the same way as variable cost of sales. Uh, a, a relative cell reference for revenues times an absolute cell reference for variable SGNA percent to sales. Return. And again, I've forgotten the negative sign convention. Uh, in this, and then fixed SGNA is simply picking up the period cost above as an absolute cell reference. And I sum up the SGNA expenses, fixed and variable, into a single item. I'm almost done here. Uh, operating profit is gross margin plus uh, the, uh, the sum of SGNA. So uh, Fred Thompson's business here is going to uh, sell only one unit in its first month, according to his forecast. It's going to earn a revenue of $150,000. It's going to have fixed and variable costs, that, uh, as shown here, earn a slight, uh, positive, slightly positive gross margin. However, he's going to give it all back in SGNA, and he's going to run uh, a, a substantial loss in his first month. As you might imagine, this is quite typical for a startup business. Now I'm going to highlight that entire row, uh, hold down the command key, and use the keyboard short shortcut C for uh, for copy. Then I'm going to type. Uh, I'm going to hold down the shift key and then the left arrow key to copy it all the way over uh, to the months at the uh, that, that constitute the first year. Then I'm going to uh, hold down the command button and type V as in victory, and that will paste the numbers that I have just copied over. I'm going to do the same thing for the second year and uh, here's my command V and I've taken care of pretty much of the forecast, the monthly budget forecast for the first and second year. It really is that simple when you have it laid out. Uh, there is a um, somewhat tedious um, step we have to go through here to uh, sum all the numbers in the first and second year. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Um, and you can watch. <laughs> if you have some way of doing this quicker, please do so and move on. Um, but uh, unfortunately, this is, this is somewhat time consuming and one of the reasons why people really don't like to do Excel spreadsheets because there's so much of this kind of work, but in the end it saves you enormous amounts of time and is also also provides information that you um, really need to understand the valuation of a business. I'm going to copy this here. I'm going to take these three and copy them here. Then I'm going to preserve the formatting of the double underline by making by having a separate sum here. Okay, I think I'm almost done. I'm going to copy these forward to second year. And voila, we have a complete set of forecasts for income statement and balance sheet given a fairly simple set of assumptions. And uh, I we can now I can now show you a quick uh, look at the IS at the uh, income statement break-even chart which is the third tab we visited earlier now that we've got numbers filled out oh there's one thing I want to do before I show you that and that is hide these two columns we can unhide them later I'm using the format column hide command that brings them together and makes them continuous and then as we show break-even chart uh, we have a better picture of what's going on with Fred's business in the first two years uh, this uh, I, I need to point out this is 
a break-even chart that focuses on the income statement only. It is, it is not a cash flow break-even chart. But uh, it is a common analysis that people like to see on, uh, particularly on startup businesses. And as you can see here, the blue line shows uh, Fred's revenues forecasted through the first two years. The red line, or the red area, is variable expenses, which includes both cost of sales and SG&A expenses. And then the green area is fixed expenses, which again includes the fixed components of both cost of sales and SG&A. And you can see here uh, very quickly and graphically that uh, Fred reaches break-even in November uh, and then dips below break-even in the month of December of his first year. Uh, but um, And presumably that's because he doesn't sell a consumer product. And then uh, his growth, his revenue projections are such that he um, begins to earn a profit in the second year. That's a good visual look at what we have just created. The specific numbers are here on the charts if you want to look them up. There's also a section down below. Um, these lines down here, revenue through variable expenses, are what we use to create the chart. And then there are a few ratios that, uh, that you might find interesting. Uh, having done that, the next step is to look at the annual model and to begin to incorporate the monthly numbers into the annual model.